Alright. <clears throat> now that I've eaten my fat food. Who are you facing? Me do. Hey, you found the one champ I wouldn't invade. Dude. I, that's like the only champ I don't invade. If you knew. So lucky you, k -Pos, So lucky you. So you're gonna start golems? Um. Alright. <clears throat> First criticism. This guy... I'm gonna hate on your opponent. This is Nunu Jungle. You have zero vision. You can't, you can't do this. You can't not have vision here. Um, the next time you do this matchup, what you need to do first, and I'm, tell I'm telling you this because you will, you will get fucked if you don't do this. Some games you will get fucked over. Alright. As you start red, walk to this corner, ward here, click around here. You'll ward over into this area. You need to know if Nunu's coming to invade you. This is like an absolute, like in this matchup, this is a must. If you don't have vision of him coming... Your team can't adapt for you. Cassiopeia is pushed up. So if you had vision, let's pretend Nunu invades. He will take your shit. You will not stop him from taking your shit. You don't have smite. You will not beat him if he invades you. So if your team doesn't have vision, they can't properly rotate and protect your buff. Okay? So in this matchup, you it's an absolute must that you ward here. If you don't have any vision... That if you if you think you're not gonna have any vision, then you have to start uh, probably at the buff. You'll have to start buff. Okay, this is very important for you jungle guys. Um, I mean, honestly, it's a good habit anyways. If you're facing Lee Sin, if you're facing Volibear, if you're facing like there's so many jungler. If you're facing Udyr, there's so many junglers that might try to invade you right away. I, you saw me last game before I started doing these. I invaded with Trindamir and got first blood. Like. I don't, I don't fuck around, so if I'm invading with Trindamir, then why wouldn't all these other junglers invade you, right? Now, <clears throat> if, uh, let's see, Mr. Philo asks you a question, what do you do if he comes? Well, <clears throat> the best way to play it, if you have vision, you see Nunu coming up, you back away from the buff, and you just kind of hang out until you see him leave. You play vision games with him until you see him leave, because guess what? He can't do any, he can't solo the buff in front of you. So you just back away until he backs away. He's not getting more ahead of you, he's not getting more behind you. You just back away, wait until he goes away, and then continue. Um, you can't, you can't leave it, you can't leave the buff, but you have to just kind of hang out and keep vision, okay? And then you're playing off of what your mid does, what your bot lane does, what their bot lane does, that's going to make your judgment on how to play, like to take the buff, um, to, to fight, to, you know, it's, it's all, it's, it gets very tricky, but it's, the best, the best first step is to just back away as soon as you see him, because you're not going to, you're not going to beat him to it, like you can just forget that, and you're going to walk it, he literally has the easiest job in the world too, he literally goes, hi Rek'Sai, Q, and then just walks away. Alright. So that's how that goes. So you start red. Let's move along. Alright. <clears throat> Okay, <clears throat> so my first thought is to be, my first thought is to ignore my top laner. So I'm going to see if you do that. And you go to bottom, going to go ahead and clear the scuttle right away. New new ganks.
Well, now that you have Scuttle cleared, you can move on. This is fine. I don't mind this start at all. I have no complaints yet, because this is just the open. I'm looking at your lanes, and I'm thinking what you could do differently, but I don't see anything right now that really stands out, because you saw Nunu mid, so you can't really go in 2v2 right now. It's not a good idea. Um... And you 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 now just saw him go over ward though. I think you should be coming. No, you shouldn't be where you are right now. That's a mistake. Yep, 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 yep. I don't like you taking the buff. I like battling. Uh, in this spot here, Cassiopeia clearly has the upper hand, right? If you cut, depending on the skill of your mid laner, if you see Nunu go over this ward, you need to start pulling wolves and walking right here. What you can do is you can counter gank, potentially get a flash, or get them to misplay, okay? I don't like going to blue here when you know that Nunu's coming around. I think it's so much better to come and try to counter gank. Counter ganks are so good. Um, and like I said, it's pretty clear that your mid laner is better than theirs, right? Like, this is how, this is how I gauge whether or not I help. I look at my mid lane, I go, oh, I just see this guy coming to gank. I'm going to come and help because we have a level, we have the level lead. I have red buff. My mid's better than their mid. Ziggs is out of mana. Like, these are all things that it's, it's what I talk about in, like, coaching videos and stuff. It's all about talking yourself into aggression, talking yourself into aggressive actions. Ziggs, no mana. Cassiopeia wrecking mid lane. I just saw Nunu come here with double buffs. I want to see if they maybe make a mistake. That's what I would do. I would come right up here. I would I would pull the wolves out, and I would spam ping into mid, and then I would see if Cassiopeia wants to battle. The mid laner's good. He will want to fight. So he will, instead of running straight back, if the mid laner's good, he'll dance a little bit, and maybe you can get some sort of gank going here. Okay? Ziggs can't do anything. Um, Ziggs is rocking, what, teleport mid? So he hasn't got shit here. He has no ignite. He has no barrier. He has no heal. Which means if you get Nunu to overplay a little bit and overstep, you're going to get this kill a lot. Or you're going to get his flash a lot. And then you can come over here and get your blue. Your blue will always be there. Ganking opportunities, counter gank opportunities that are juicy as Nunu walking over. I would even be tempted to not even clear the wolves to come and try to interdict this faster. Okay? These, these camps stay... Good ganks, good clean ganks, especially his wreck side. Now, this isn't like a Trindomir jungle for me. This is more of an early game Lee Sin type of thing. I love seeing wreck sides play aggressive. You see me face it all the time up here in the top lane when wreck side gets team ahead because he's hyper aggressive. That's what I want you to do. Um, now, enough of that. You opt to don't help, and as played, Cassiopeia kind of dances around and burns her flash. Now, think if you were here, um, you would definitely be able to counter gank off of this spot. So you get blue. Sweet. I'm glad you're ignoring top lane. I would not help this guy at all. After seeing him get first blooded, he is dead to me. So basically the lane's on him at that point. That's how I feel. So now you're going bot lane. Let's see your gank. Cassiopeia is very, very, very aggressive. Very lucky that Nunu isn't camping after burning the flash. Lanes are pushed up. Cassiopeia is pinging. Here's the thing. She's staying and her mana is pretty low. Nunu's going to gank this. Um... Okay, she backed away. Now, I see you going for top lane. I don't like this gank at all. Just so you know. I don't know how it's going to go, but I hate it already. I can tell you a bunch of reasons why. Yeah. <clears throat> this gank is a waste of space. You'd be much better suited just going for scuttle or going for a camp. In my opinion. If Nidalee misplays and, like, dies, that's her own fault, but we must assume our opponents know how to escape ganks. Nidalee shouldn't be some gank you rely on. You could have had Scuttle right now. Nunu's gonna get that. That's okay. I think you could have farmed a little bit more. Look at, look at, Top's gonna die anyways. What can you do? 
You know what I mean? Like, what, are you going to camp there and hope that Nidalee goes in as soon as you leave? Like, no. It's a waste of your time. I'm hoping you cover mid. No, 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 hold mid. Hold mid. Get this XP. Get the XP. Red will still be there. Remember, your buffs and shit will still be there. Opportunities are opportunities, and they don't go anywhere. It's an opportunity for you to hit your six faster. Um... I would like you pressuring bottom right now. I would be tempted for you to just go bottom. Like, ult bottom and be there. The reason why is you see Nunu's here. You need to put the pressure on these guys. <clears throat> and see if you can get something done. You see the wave thinning? We don't really know Blitz is backing yet. And now that he is back, it makes this even better. You could three-man this too. Yeah, I think you should have just ulted bottom and just went down. Because Nunu is backing, and there really isn't much up here. You're still going top lane. Why? Fuck top lane. Oh my god. Dude! This is why I'm saying fuck top lane. Oh my god. He's gonna suicide. Alright. <clears throat> this is free drag for a good competent jungler. Here he comes. He misplayed the shit out of it. Right? He starts doing drag. That's free for him. Oh my god, he's awful! Oh my god! So when you're top, Nunu literally can just solo drag right now. Dude, this is why I say results. This is why I say results don't mean shit about, like, win-loss. Like, you can win a game, and it could be because your opponent is an absolute monkey, dude. He's a baboon. This guy's a baboon at the keyboard, dude. He's a Wukong playing Nunu in real life. All right. So, Rek'Sai goes top. Two things that happen. All right. So you go top, right? I hope this Nidalee's stupid and dives into a Galio. Right? So, you get the Nidalee kill. This is an auto dragon. This is like what this is what we call a fucking insta dragon. Instantly. Instantly should just go solo, solo. Solo. Solo the dragon. Kill the dragon. Kill the dragon. Fight the dragon. You're fucking Nunu, right? This is what I'm saying. Results don't mean shit. Down here, same concept. Look what this guy does. Look what this Wukong at the keyboard. Look what he does. He flashes forward and then just starts ulting randomly. Like, he's a, he's a baboon, dude. That was free drag. You basically gave away free drag. You're chasing an Italy around. This isn't 100% gank. This is one of those ganks where, like, you're ganking hoping that the enemy top laner is an idiot. That's never good. That's a, that's a gamble. That's what we call a gamble. You know what I like? I like non-gambles. I like this guy. This guy is winning, probably probably winning in farm. Yeah, I like this guy. Cassiopeia beating Sigs with teleport in farm. Okay? I like fighting with this guy. So what do you do? You come up with ways to dive this Ziggs, who, by the way, doesn't have an exhaust, doesn't have a barrier, doesn't have a heal. Now, you, the way you do this is you just... Play it, pay attention to the jungle. Get like a deep ward. The minute you see Nunu too far away from mid, you just go right in for the dive. You tell, you ping it. You tell Cassiopeia you go in. You're going to go in and kill this guy. This is a guy trying to cut corners with teleport. If I play teleport in the mid lane, I think that this could happen to me when I do it. This Ziggs, though, he's getting really, really low in the mid lane. Mid lane. It's free money, dude. It's dead money. Your mid is better than their mid, and he's doing better than their mid despite Nunu showing up a bunch. That's why I say don't bother with top. Top got solo killed as Galio. 
to an, a, a fucking nittily top AP. It's like the worst shit ever. Galio is dead to me. That's how I view it. This guy is not dead to me. This guy is my hero. And bot lane's my heroes. Also notice bot lane's ahead. Why not? Why not come down here, camp in the brush, try to get a good dive down? You know? Look, Nidalee solo kills Galio again. Third time now. Alright, let's look at this. Let's slow this down now. I need more vision of what's happening. Alright. Mmm. So you suspect that these guys are probably getting ganked. So you're trying to follow up. You have your ult, but you're not, you're not in position to ult, so it's fine. So your team basically just gets caught out. <clears throat> I don't think you really did much wrong in this spot, now that I look at it again. I wanted to make sure you didn't miss an opportunity. So this is good. Coming for the knockup. There's a knockup. And I hope you're spam pinging dragon right now. <clears throat> yeah, AP Nidalee beating Galio top is embarrassing. I'm not gonna lie. So Nunu's gonna try to come and steal. Um, this is dangerous. Yeah, this is gonna get ugly. Okay, thankfully he's bad. Like he's been all game. I'm never losing dragon there if I'm new new. So so far with this game, I see that I, I think that you don't take opportunities when they're like given to you sometimes, and I think you're trying to force goofy ganks that don't make any sense. So far. You alt bottom. Uh Let's take a look at why you did this. Nah, be more creative than this. Be more creative than this. So, what you can do instead, you can ult here into golems, and then come in from behind your team. Thresh and Graves are ahead now, so all Thresh has to do is walk up, try to flay, hit a lantern, and then bam, you're in, you're gonna kill this Jinx every time. Jinx has no summoners, and you should know that from that last fight. That was a goofy- that would qualify as a goofy gank. That'd be a goofy gank. This is good. I like the sneakiness here. I don't mind this. Catch Nunu, you back away. Defending your pink, that's fine. Now, I want you to notice that. This is what I'm talking about, putting stock in people. It's funny how, it's funny how I call this shit out before it happens. This Cassiopeia is battling. This Cassiopeia is in the streets. And I already told you that this is who you should be focusing on. Not this shit. This fucking crap Galio that can't lane properly, right? This is what you should be focusing on. You should be focusing on this. Notice how this is a one-for-one one trade, even though it's like a three-on-two. Okay? So Cassiopeia gets Ziggs low, right? Gets Ziggs low, and despite that, despite not getting the kill, it's still going to trade one-for-one. One. That's what I'm saying. That's why these are the people you should try to be focusing and working with more. Because they will make plays for you. You gotta recognize when they're dominating lanes. That's half the... Dude, that's half the job of a jungler, man. It's like you gotta put... It's like it's like playing the stock market with these players. Galio's... Yeah, Galio's gonna die. Again. Solo killed again.
pretty embarrassing. And for the guys that, uh, for the guys like, don't you ever want to help, uh, yeah, exactly. Junglers, junglers do camp the best player on any LCS team. That's just what they do most of the time. And people that are thinking like, oh, what if my, you know, what if my top lane sucks? It's like, isn't it a good idea to help them? It's like, no, dude, if he's behind, like, he's done. It's over. If he dies early, I'm done. I, I give up on him. That's a risk you take. I've died early before. I don't expect my jungler to help me. Look at that little shimmy, dude. You see that? Look at this Cassiopeia, dude. Notice what's happening. You're battling with the best player on the team, or the best mid in the game, and the best player that you're gonna get out of your carries right now. And guess what's happening? Creating opportunities. Now, some games every lane's gonna lose and you're gonna be with your thumb in your ass as a jungler, but I recognize that Cassiopeia was gonna be good way before anybody else did in this game. So if I can recognize it, you can do it. Uh-oh. That feel when you start getting beat by Galio anyways. And you know what? You know what? Let me just say something about this guy. This guy, you know, he might have got solo killed a couple times. He might have got his cock slapped a little bit in the lane. But you know what? He didn't quit. And now he's winning 1v1 top lane, dude. That's... You know what we call this guy? This guy is a champion, dude. He's got a lot of facial hair. I don't have a lot of facial hair. This guy does, though. This guy... This guy is the king. You know? He may not be a good solo laner. He may, he may die sometimes in lane. But he keeps his head in the game. And he stays huge. Anyways. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, let's back this up. What the fuck was this shit? So, you have your flash up. This is the spot. You get yanked. And you make it out. Just remember, while this looks nice, remember Rex is getting nerfed soon. So don't get too excited. It was good that you stayed alive. But you do see him coming. So, gotta think ahead a little bit. Whenever you're chasing deep, just think about stuff like that. It's good that it worked out for you. Going right back to farming, right back to farming, getting big. Get your Cassiopeia blue, that's good. Level 12. Trying to steal red, alright, ew. Okay. Alright, I guess. I guess, dude. If you if you say if you say that's a good invade as Rexai, and you <laughs> and you and you if you think that long term that's gonna be a uh, a good invade. Oh my god. This grave's a sicko. Sick dodges, dude. Alright, so what do you do? Nice. Follow up with the Galio. Good. Focusing the carry. Good. I like it. I like it. Do your best to stay alive. How is this game longer than... Dude. This is a long game. We're going to speed it up a little bit. What the hell happens? This game should be dead in the water.
The throw has happened. All right. So here's my thoughts. Um, right now, I feel like I'm glad you're getting levels. I'm glad you're power leveling. This is good. My only concern... So here, Graves gets caught. He's caught, right? So you try to pick off this Jinx. But here's the thing about this play. I don't really know. I would much rather you be like pushing or doing something else. I love the Jaws music. Because once your Fed ADC gets caught, there's nothing you can really do solo. In my opinion. And that kid's going off. It goes back to what I'm saying. Like, stay near your Cassiopeia. And, like, if you see three people bottom, you can maybe look to die from over the wall with that guy. Like, he's good. So, don't... Don't get caught. If, so, if someone gets caught, don't get caught yourself. You didn't die. I'm just saying look for opportunities elsewhere on the map. Like, here's the thing. I want you to create, like, I want you as a jungler to create shit. I don't want you to react to shit. If you see Graves get caught, you don't think, oh, uh, I'm going to try to make this worth. Instead, go, uh, let's get a fucking, you know, let's go up here and, and pressure the map elsewhere. Maybe get a turret. Maybe, maybe a guaranteed dive. Because these guys, are, you know, they're out of position down here. It was just Nidalee defending. So all you had to do, you know, you could come down here, zone off Nidalee, and, and push in. It, there wasn't too much to be afraid of, to be totally honest with you. The carries were down here. Nidalee's sort of fed, but she's going to just solo you. That's all I'm saying. I know he's your duo partner. That's why I call you out, trying to save your duo too much. Wait, how did this happen? So this is where they got back into the game. And this... Well, you know, this was actually going to be the next thing I was going to say. Um, I think at some point, if Thresh isn't going to do it, I think at some point you have to take you have to take the initiative and put down a ward of some kind over here. Like... This is really bad, especially now that I now that I see it. I know it's hindsight 2020, but it's new new man. Like someone had to put wards down here. Someone has to have wards to know. Cause look at Galio. Like this is such an easy. Like Galio could just go dirt dirt dirt, and he could flash over, and just ult, and probably clean this and probably keep this alive. But yeah, I'm, I'm trying not to be a hindsight hero here. Because I didn't really point it out right away. But this is Nunu. So we are supposed to have an idea that he might try this. This is one of the only junglers that's really going to do this a lot. The only addition to that is like maybe if you have like a Heimerdinger mid, he might try some cheesy early Baron stuff. But <clears throat> in this instance here, we've got to be aware of this. This is why, honestly, I would bet you this is why the game goes on for another 20 minutes. 30 minutes. Holy shit. All right, let's launch a little bit more. I don't want this to take up the whole afternoon. So you guys fight a Baron team. And here they come. So you see how much they got off of that Baron? A oh, fuck ton, dude. That's what I said. This is what drags the game out. That Baron. Holy shit. Rampage. Here they come a pushing. 
Cassiopeia scripting it up. So, obviously, it goes without saying, the optimal thing to do is to ping your team back and not die. If they decide to fight a Baron team and get caught, guess what? That's their fault. I just spam ping back. If they start going in, I just leave them every time. Because there's a chance you keep objectives up if you live, and a lot of players don't understand that. Alright, let's back this one up. Alright. Oh, that's terrible. Don't try to salvage crap. Don't try to salvage crap. You could be four on five right now, and it would be in a much better position, I think. Galio misplayed hard, got hooked, and uh, you weren't really in position. Thresh wasn't really in position. If Thresh was in position, I wouldn't have minded and, and engage. But Thresh out of position means nope. This is platinum, I believe. That's why our hero here is making some good plays, but some bad decisions. Well, good mechanical stuff, but some bad decisions. And I think his decision making can improve and let him carry more games. Alright. So, now we got another Baron. Guess what? That shit's fucking gone. That shit is gone, and you need to treat it as gone. Watch. It goes back to what I was saying before. Look at this, dude. Look at this, dude. That's awesome that you stole that Baron. That's great, right? That's fucking wonderful, okay? However, while that's wonderful, just know, just understand that the only reason you are getting that Baron is you are basically saying... My opponent's bad. Okay, my opponent is bad. There is no universe where he should lose his Baron. Look at the scripts. Look at this Cassiopeia script, dude. See this fucking scripted piece of shit. Look at this scripted nerd, dude. You see him? Oh, shit. Don't assume... That your opponent is a Wukong IRL playing Nunu. Alright? I'm glad you stole the Baron. That's definitely worth dying to steal the Baron. But it's not a reliable decision versus Nunu. It's not a good decision. Don't try it. Don't try it. Also, I, I want to point out that when you go and you try to steal it and you die in that spot... So you, you, thank God you steal it, right? If you die in this spot and then Thresh dies, you're very fortunate that you have the most obvious scripter on your team that I've ever seen in my life. And this guy. Like, his name is P on my name. I bet if I look this guy up right now. Hold on, let me see. P on... My neighbor. Hold on. I want to see this for myself. Yeah. 6-0 six, six oh, Cassiopeia. Really? A 6-0? Oh? He, he's, just, he's just recently decided that he's the man at Cassiopeia and he just can't miss? I highly doubt that. I highly doubt that, dude. That's what I'm saying. Look at this fucking guy. He didn't, dude, he didn't have anywhere, dude, that guy's cheating as a motherfucker. Look at this fucking, look at this fucking cheater. Hold on a second. So that, we gotta point out this fucking cheater right quick. Look at this fucking guy. Hold on. I, I, you know, I call that shit out like a fucking bot. Look at this cheater. Look at him. Look at him cheating. Right? Oh, you know, I, I dabble in some Cassiopeia, you know, five and three and eight, right? 
Oh, but season five? Oh, yeah. Six, four, and eight, dude. I'm the best Cassiopeia. I fucking flash. I hit every ult. I don't get hit by a single skill shot. I'm the shit. This fucking cheater, dude. I don't know. Maybe he just gets it, right? Who knows? Let's hope he just let's hope he just figured it out recently. Uh He can't win a game and then suddenly he he, he can't break even as Cassiopeia and now suddenly he's the man. I doubt it. I fucking doubt it. You cheating. This guy's cheating. Anyways, my point was gonna be <clears throat> My point was gonna be the, the stealing the Baron is great if you actually steal it, which is like less than 10%. However, if you go in there and you don't steal it, and then the enemy team pushes with five, like with Baron 5v3 in him ready, uh, there's a chance that you now lose the game. And I don't think giving the Baron away with your team the way that it is. Um, Nidalee, Nidalee top is trash. They've got great siege, sure. But I do think that you can you can hold out. I think there's a chance that you hold out. It was going to be my point. But, you know, that great. You made a play. Good job. You stole it. You're the man. If it was any other jungler, I'd say go for it. If you if you're confident in your smite, go for it. If you think you can if you think you can outplay him, try it. Fuck it. I just don't think you're going to outplay Nunu enough. We got Galio disconnecting. Thresh, good job on the disengage. You're gonna get caught. Let's watch our hero scripter here while he's. All right. Let's watch Rex side for a second. So you get caught a little bit. Little positional error. You're trying to bait into the Galio ult, which I like. Turn it, Galio. Turn it, Galio. There it is! Hey! Instant knockup by Butchcrank, though. That's pretty sick. Nice play. Really well played by the uh, Graves there. And that's a good bait. That's a good team fight, you know? You got caught, but your team rotated well, and then you guys fought it out correctly. Now, what do you do? You got bottom. Grave starts pushing. That's correct. You should be pushing. Um... Let me just give you my thoughts on that. The go and chase, chase Ziggs in Italy. I'd much rather you go and push bottom and then go down to Dragon and after you like shove in bottom. The reason why is because breaking turrets versus this type of team, you're facing Jinx, Ziggs, and Nidalee and Blitzcrank. So as soon as you can get turrets down, the better, in my opinion. So your decision after you guys won the fight to go up and, and dink around at Dragon, you had four bottoms, so you very easily could have just walked bottom and taken this turret. You gotta break turrets versus Ziggs as soon as possible. That's what I say when I see Ziggs. I'm like, oh shit, let's push turrets quick, 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 quick. Get turrets down so you can't drag the game out to, I don't know, a 58 minute game. Alright. So you battle, you battle, you battle. I think we know that Baron's up. Okay, this you're in a much better position to defend this this time. Now, let's look around the map here. Your positioning doesn't make much sense to me right now. Um, it's not really a good idea to, to try to just go ham here. Basically, what I'm getting at is I'm scared for my carries. I want to be near them. This is much better for me. I like this much better. Being, being away from them means they might try to isolate your carry and pick them. Like, Blitz might flash, pull, and shit on your carry or some dumb shit. Because, just because you're not there. You promote them being aggressive by being not there. Okay, Galio's doing a cool thing. Fighting for wards. Fighting for vision. 
I like that. Getting vision control. He's going to take some damage, but it's definitely a good move. Now, mid is pushing. So, you're in a great little spot, vision-wise. Um, bot is pushing as well. So, you don't want anybody getting picked right now, really. Because if, if your team gets picked, that means bot and hib's going to go down. So, you're doing a little Baron Dance. Also, top's pushing hard. <clears throat> Graves is doing the right thing, pushing. You cannot get engaged on once he shows two mid. Guess what they're going to want to do right here. This guy's doing the right thing. He's thinking, all right, I see two pushing mid. I want to try to hit a hook. I can't hit a hook. All right, I'm going to go help my team now. <clears throat> Cassiopeia is in a funky spot. Scripts don't make you position properly all the time. But he's realizing he needs to be near his team. Thresh hits a hook. Graves does a good job of not getting hooked. And now you guys have resumed being in mid. So, you got a turret. That was really good. That was really, really useful. But now what do you guys do? Top is pushing. So, look at your team. What are they doing? Can I engage? Does an engage make sense? Well, you don't really know where Ziggs is, and you don't know where Nunu is, so I'd say no in this spot. So nothing's going to get done here. Just a little dancing. Now, they see Ca this is where the game gets kind of scary. They see Cassiopeia bot. They know that she's bot. Okay? So they're going to try to force a fight, and then Thresh is going to, like, engage? Oh, no. This is so dangerous and so ugly. This is a 4v5 instigated by your Thresh. Really good Zig Zonius. Or Nidalee Zonius, rather. Yeah. And hey, you know what? You did your little battle, but you got out. That's all you can really do. Or maybe you didn't get out. It'd be cool if you get out. Now we have Scripps McGee over here. So, you know... I feel like, I feel like all you could have done differently in this spot, when your team decides that they're going to fight 4v5, all you could do is once you see your fed scripting cheating 80, or your trip, your cheating mid going bottom, he really might not be cheating. I, I have no idea. I, I'm just fucking with you guys at this point. I, I don't want to ha have this dude like have a reputation. I really don't have any evidence. Uh, everything that he's done has been fine, really. I mean, there's nothing too shady going on, in my opinion. But I haven't, I haven't been eyeballing him, so I don't want you guys to like... But when you're, cheating <laughs> when you're cheating mid, goes bottom to defend, you need to spam ping your team back. I think that's the smartest thing to do. Okay? Um, and, and then hope they, hope they stay out of it. And then, uh, you know, if, you guys, if your guy engages, I think you did a good job of battling and getting out. Basically, I'm battling trying to get out. Like, trying to get out and then, like, fight, fight, CC... And hope that they maybe somehow pull out a win. But I'm trying to keep myself alive. Because I know that if I die, that means they're going to get barren and push down everything. For free. Now, if you had died, there's a chance they might have dead barren. Alright. <clears throat> Alright, so Galio's doing a flank. This is kind of cool. Let's see it. Let's see it, Galley, bro. <laughs> 
No. No. Too ambitious, dude. That's a good triple knockup. Not scripting. Definitely not scripting. <laughs> Maybe. But probably not. So Galio forces another bad fight. So your top laner forces a goofy fight that makes no sense. Um, basically, once he got caught, like once he got caught doing that, he needed to back away. So there's no way he could force that. Wow. So, <clears throat> I think that was a pretty high risk, high risk dragon. Very fortunate. There's some, been some fortunates, fortunates for you guys that have kept you alive. Like, if Graves dies there, that's probably free Baron, uncontested. Um, they also could have gotten dragon. Like, that was very, very close. They also, yeah, they could have killed Graves too if they realized that they popped the, the, uh, the GA. It would have been very easy. And they're going to try to Baron anyways. This fucking troll game, dude. There's no way you guys should be winning from this spot, but let's see what happens. Gets hit by the hook. Flashes right away. Gets silenced. Cassiopeia ult. Not scripting. I was definitely wrong there. Now, um... How do you guys win? It's an 80 second fucking timer! And they have Baron! How do you guys not win? Or how do you guys win? Well, there's one way. Hold on, let's watch that again. Let's watch this Blitzcrank, dude. I can't wait to throw, guys! I can't wait, guys! Wait! No, Blitz was fine. Nunu could have ended the game. Dude, Nunu could have... You know what? Hey, you guys want to learn something? Look. Let me tell you what. When I hear people... When I hear these fucking junglers and talk shit about how their team threw and yada yada, look at this. I'm looking at Nunu right now. I'm looking at Nunu right now thinking, where the fuck is your engage, Nunu, you piece of shit? This guy, look at this guy's items. Get the fuck in there and fucking ult. There's three people down for a, almost a minute. Flash over the wall. Get these guys down for 60 seconds. Fucking tank turret. Get turret. Get two inhibs up. Or get two inhibs down. What the fuck? Look at him. Look at him. I don't want to. I play solo queue and I don't want to throw, so I'm not going to dive. No way am I gonna dive. Look at Ziggs. I, I, I play Soul Q. I don't want to try to make a play. Oh, it's 5v2. That is a legit, like, that is a legit just walk in. Like, walk in and dive. Look at it. Game should be dead. Or near dead. Missed opportunity. Now they're gonna get one in hip when they could have gotten two. Oh, never mind. Uh, Graves instantly throws it anyways. What the fuck? Dude, I, I can't even keep up. I can't even keep up with the, the mental shit. Okay, so instead of getting one down, you now give away both. Okay. How do you win? Now now I just want to know how you win. Pure entertainment at this point. Alright, let's see what happens. Well, how does this team throw this? Alright guys, you ready? Here, here's how this goes, okay? This is how you win from this position. This is like, this to me is like a 90% win position. Okay? All you do as a team, and this is for everybody watching my stream. There's a hundred and something of you. I appreciate every single one of you watching. 
All right. All you do is you walk around this ring. You push every wave in. You just walk around the ring. Nidalee should be going bottom and pushing bottom. You all this team has to do at this pit. Three and Hibs are open around the same time. So all you guys have to do, if you play fucking fives teams or whatever, literally walk around, push, 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 push. Game's over. It's it's chess checkmate. There's absolutely nothing that the ball, the the blue team can do to keep the game afloat at that point. There is nothing they can do. You're facing Ziggs and Nidalee, and you have super minions on all three lanes. This is a fucking this is cake. So if they, it, it, when they lose, because we know they lose, it's going to be really stupid. Watch. This is the shit that tilts me, man. No one understands. They try to fight. They try to battle. Dude, it's strategics. You literally group as five. Or, or maybe just have one guy splitting. Like one guy pushing other lanes. And the other guys literally push the waves. They don't fight. They don't try to fight. They don't think about fighting. They push and back away. Push and back away. That's all you have to do. That's it. That's all you have to do. Watch Blitz. Watch Blitz. Watch him. Watch him. Watch him. Watch him. How can I throw this? That's what he's thinking. How can I throw this? Look. Look Look at the team. Look at the team. This should be... Someone should be after this. Someone should be pushing this. Why is nobody pushing this? Why is nobody pushing this? They're not thinking about pushing. Look at them. They're not thinking about it. Nidalee can, slow, can push by herself. They're not thinking about pushing. They're thinking about, how can I get kills? Look at them. Look at them. Frolicking newbies. Frolicking in the fields. Look, 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 look. Here they come. Here they come. Three and hips down. 90% chance of winning. Here it is, dude. Watch. How can I fight? How can I fight and throw this? There's Galio. Look at the waves. Look at the waves. Look at this. Three and hips down. Galio, hard engage. Hideous. Hideous. Stay away. Look at this. Look at this Galio, dude. Walks up. He broadcasted it. Dude, you could see him getting ready to engage from the moon. From the moon. Watch him, watch him, watch him. Watch this shit. Ready? Watch him. Hmm. What am I gonna do? I don't know. I don't know. What am I gonna do? I'm a just a... I'm just your friendly Galio. I've been trying to do this play all day long. What am I gonna do to you? What's the only way we can win this game, guys? I don't know. Maybe if you let him flash... Hit a fucking massive ultimate on your team. Jesus Christ. Fail. Epic fail. Look at this. Now look. Look at their base. All they had to do. All they had to do was survive. Look at this. Look at the waves. Look at it. But guess what? You just couldn't. They just couldn't wait to stand near the other team, dude. They just couldn't wait to stand near the other team. Their whole team is right here. Just let it fucking push. Let it push. Look at it. Cheating McGee. Look at Cheating McGee go, dude. He's just cleaning the waves up. And now all your hips are going to come back at the same time. And I guarantee you someone's going to get caught. Here it comes. Graves. Fucking playmaking machine, dude. Here it comes. Someone's going to get caught. All in hips are up. Honestly, this is the part. This, this is the part of the game where I'm giving you guys a nod now, 
Because your team actually has now caught up. Is more than caught up. And I don't see them ever beating you in a team fight. And that's that's probably what's going to happen. Is they're just going to team fight and then... Here it comes. Caught. Someone gets caught. And there it is. Here comes the uh, the W right here. Here it comes. They're going to try to defend the Baron, and that's going to be all she wrote. What a painful throw. Now, I'm sorry, K-Pasta, if I turn this into more of a, a global game as opposed to focused on you, okay? Um, but this actually became, like, we started with your decision-making... Which is great and everything. Well, let's let's watch them take the throne. I, I gotta see this fucking throw to to believe it, dude. Watch this shit. Watch him throw it. Wow. So, <clears throat> to conclude. To conclude, let's go ahead and back it up to like here. This is where the game was lost. All right, look. If I don't, here, this video is useful because it it hammers home this concept for you guys. All right, this is what this this is what this replay shows. And K Pasta, you got your advice in terms of like decision making, ganks, and why I wouldn't gank certain lanes. I think you could have snowballed mid way harder and made this game a lot easier for yourself. Um, I also think that. Uh, I think you need to be more decisive instead of reactionary. You need to come up, talk yourself into aggression. Remember that. And uh, this would be a spot where I wouldn't talk myself into aggression. By the way, the Baron Steel, those little edge cases is what kept you afloat, sure. Um, however, I will argue that I think you, I think decision-making wise, you have some, some improvements to make. And like I was saying, these guys should never lose in this position. Like they threw really fucking hard. Um, and back to what I was saying, when you have three inhibs down, just don't get engaged on and push. Like, and I can, I can break it down as simple as this. Watch. So, when we see Galio come up. When we see Galio come up, Zig's positioning is horrendous. Alright, look at this huge wave, dude. This is so easy of a game. Literally, just back away. His only job in life is to clear waves and push lanes out that's it that's his only job he he literally could have stood here in this at this part of the map and just walked around the back walked around the wall literally on the on like the, behind the wall even and just pushed waves that's it game was over you guys had no way to clear that and then you would have hit the turret and then bam ziggs can ult the turret all these minions pushing in you can't fight it's gg but because these guys don't understand how powerful three and hips are. They wind up throwing a game, which I thought for sure. This is so rare to me. I think for sure, like, you can't throw from here. But look at Ziggs, dude. No, and also note, note the Nozonia Ziggs stepping in. First, first position, dude. Look at him. That hurt. That, it just hurts to watch. It just hurts to watch. That's it. That's literally the fucking game. Dude, and that's why that's why I say when there's three and hips down, if you lose with three and hips down, you're an idiot. You probably deserve to lose. Because you just don't understand like the fundamentals of the game. That's that is a that is legit a fundamental. That is like a fundamental, dude. It's like you gotta you gotta know that once you have three and hips down, the game's dead. 